Hello, I'm with Mark Bitzer, CEO of Whirlpool Appliances. It's so good to have you here, and thank you so much for coming and being with us. Thanks for having me. So, what is your perspective on how supply chains in the future will look like, and what lessons have you learned from the pandemic? Yeah, I think obviously this pandemic, and let's face it, it's still not behind us, they have brought a completely different perspective on supply chain, mm -hmm. um, because the supply constraints were just, that was the most visible part, but everything behind it was just made it very transparent every day. Um, and frankly, these supply chain constraints are still not behind us. And I think they will be around us for quite a while. Mm. So as such, um, Mopo as a company, we're completely rethinking with how do we design the architecture of supply chain going forward? Because obviously, yeah, everybody uses terms like resilience, reliability, responsiveness, etc. Yes, it's all true. The question is, how do you bring it to life and how do you change it? But it's a big, big area of attention. What do you see in the next two to three years when it comes to global supply chains and the partners? That What are the requirements that you're looking for in supply chain partners as you see that two to three year vision down the line? Yeah, I mean, it's twofold. One is, first of all, the change which we're talking about is a pretty massive change yes. um, because you're basically uprooting a system which has been in place for decades and you're kind of trying to change it to a new world, a new reality. So obviously we're looking for partners who, who are not just doing what we tell them to do, but actually who inspire us with your ideas um, and give us input and insights um, because, again, that's new territory for us as well. Um, so we're looking for somebody who can help us in a partnership go that way and, and kind of create that new supply chain architecture. The other element is, you know, in, in this world where everything is crazy every day, I think you look more and more for people whom you trust and you can partner with, um, as opposed to this transactional, you just, it's all about cost, but don't get me wrong, it's always going to be about cost, but it's more than just cost. A trusted relationship is a big deal, in particular in these uncertain times. And when you look into Maersk, what advice do you have for us to be able to support a customer like Whirlpool in the future? I, th I think it's, first of all, you are on the right journey. And I, I actually have the privilege to at least hear one hour of leadership conference. And, and I think this whole concept of put yourself in customer shoes is a very powerful concept. Um, mm. Because, to because it forces you to understand really how do your customers look at it, or the customers of your customers. So I think that's already a very powerful lens, and I think, I really honestly believe you are on the right journey. I think the, the one thing is also, and I tell it all sometimes our team's insight, you know, sometimes the most challenging customers can be the most valuable customers. What I mean with that is, you learn more from a customer who challenges you every day, and who may be sometimes a little bit tougher and has higher standards, um, and I know sometimes it's painful, um, but it makes you better. Um, so I think, you know, and I'm not trying to position Whirlpool as a difficult customer, but, you know, a challenging customer who, who really pushes you raises well, the bar overall and makes your company better. Then the last question, uh, even our customers are also becoming more demanding when it comes to sustainable companies and they're even willing to pay a premium yep. for solutions that are carbon neutral or going to be carbon neutral. Yep. What is the role in, when it comes to partners in your supply chains to help yep. you achieve those goals? Well, first of all, and I'm, I apologize, but I didn't have a time when I was on stage to talk about that, um, but, but most people may not expect, uh, first of all, yeah, we're, we're already committed to be carbon neutral 2030. What most people don't know is for how strong our roots of our company are in this space. You know, yeah. our company set up an office for environmental affairs in 1969. Most people couldn't spell sustainability back there. Um, we were the first company to sign the Kyoto Agreement and deliver it, etc. So we are, in a company like ours, which is 111 years old, you look at the word sustainability different mm -hmm. because it means something different if you have been around for such a long time and you want to be around for such a long time. So. Our commitment runs deep. It's not driven by some populistic discussions. It runs deep. Um, we're firm on this one. And as such, yes, a partner who is equally committed to that journey is a really, really important thing. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate Thank it. Thanks, Very Catherine. nice to meet Thanks. you.